Good afternoon, I'm Mabel Jong and you're watching the World Healthcare Congress Interview Zone and I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Molly Coy to the interview chair. She is Chief Innovation Officer at UCLA Health System. Dr. Coy, great to see you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being one of our panelists today. What were some of the things that were talked about and the key takeaways? We talked about how radically different healthcare is today from 10 years ago. It's not just health reform, but it's the proliferation of new technologies that there are many more ways to help our patients now than when we were in medical school or started running hospitals. Okay, as Chief Innovation Officer at the UCLA Health System, have you noticed, noticed a change in appetite for innovations over the years? Definitely, and part of that is because there are more innovations and many of them are smaller or less expensive. It used to be that a new innovation might be a new kind of CAT scanner or a new kind of laboratory equipment that would be tremendously expensive and take a long time to make a decision about. But today, many of these technologies are things that the consumer can wear or an app they can use on their mobile phone or it's something that the doctor can use in the primary care clinic. And in that way, it's quick and you can implement it, you can try it out, you can learn whether it works, you can find out if the patients like it. So it's a very different environment. What's defined as quick? Quick would be six months. Wow, that so, does sound yeah, very quick. Yeah. Now, is that because the environment is supporting that uh, due to healthcare reform, we're needing to have answers for certain issues quickly? That's definitely it because so many more patients have health insurance now, so the demand is going up, and we already had shortages of some of the providers. And so what we're finding is that we've always known that there are people in the community who can be empowered with tablets and with two-way video as health workers to help us in the community. And so we're finding new ways to meet the needs in the community that really work. How sustainable is this? This is very sustainable because it keeps people out of the emergency room and out of a hospital. It saves so much money that you can afford to pay for it for a long time to come. Okay. Now, it seems very exciting that UCLA has its own institute for innovations. Are you in competition with other organizations throughout the country and really throughout the world for these really bright minds to come and bring their ideas to you? Well, we are, but we get a lot of them, so we're pretty happy about it. But yes, I mean, this is a, an area that's burgeoning, and I was one of the early chief innovation officers in a health system, but now we see more and more of them. And as a matter of fact, UCLA founded an organization and a summit just for the innovation and transformation officers. There's so many of them now. Really? There's enough to support? I mean, uh, yeah. give me an idea of how, oh, uh, what you're talking about here. We're over 100 around the country now. Okay. And in the, in the world, there must be other countries in, that are competing for the same kinds of information. Yeah. In the world, there are. In England, there is. In Europe, there is. In Singapore, in China. Now that I think about it, uh, they may not always be called an innovation officer, but there are health systems innovating all mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And I've spent time in India and in China and a number of different places, and what you see there is just as exciting. Okay. What is going to... Um assist today's patients the most? I mean, you, we talked a little bit mm -hmm. about how the focus has really shifted from caring for the sick to supporting the well yeah. people. Um, how are innovations going to take a look at that and, and really target mm -hmm. the minds to be developing yeah. the right kinds of things? Well, I think the most important kind of innovation actually supports both people who are relatively well and staying healthy and people who have chronic diseases, long-term conditions that they're struggling with. And that is communication systems and monitoring systems that reach them in their home with their mobile phone or with other devices in the home or in the community. Because if you think about it, even if you have several bad diseases, you only see the doctor maybe every three months or every six months. And so having a way every day to check how you're doing and if you're getting in a little bit of trouble, getting in touch with you and doing something about it before you get worse, that really makes a huge difference. Sure. That 
can take out 60 or 70 percent of the risk of going to an emergency room or the hospital and 60 or 70 percent of the cost uh -huh, and keep uh -huh. people healthy. Well, when we talk about the health system costing um, an amount uh, to American taxpayers that is not sustainable, yeah. are people really going to be focused on innovating new things when they're so busy trying to take mm -hmm. care of today? Yeah. Yes, they will, because these are the things that actually drive down the cost. If you look at, we have only so, so much money to care for a million people. If you keep doing it, waiting for them to get sick, and then doing it in the hospital, we're going to run out of money mm -hmm. very quickly. But if you keep them healthy with relatively inexpensive mobile apps and primary care visits and community workers, you save far more than that costs. Okay. Dr. Coy, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks for watching.